Kenya is getting a fiscal boost from the International Monetary Fund. East Africa's largest economy will receive $447 million from the International Monetary Fund. The Washington-based lender said this in a statement Monday that the funds, which will include an augmentation of about $216 million. So how much has Kenya received from the IMF in total? Total amount disbursed to the largest economy in East Africa it amounts to $2.4 billion. The statement came after the executive board of the IMF finished a review of the lender's loan programs. Let's take a look at the purpose of this latest disbursement, Kenya's debt vulnerabilities, support for COVID uh, response, support for, uh, against exogenous shocks, and enhanced governance and broader economic reforms. Uh, Kenyan shilling, though, reaching its lowest point ever as a result of uh, the U.S. persistently aggressive monetary policy. Uh, as at last count, 123.15 to the dollar is where we saw the uh, shilling. All right, for the whole month of December, fuel prices won't change, providing Kenyans with a small reprieve as they enter the busy holiday travel season. The Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, announced in its most recent review of fuel prices that the cost of super gasoline, diesel, kerosene will not change until the next review, uh, January the 14th. According to uh, recently elected president of Kenya, William Russo, the Kenyan government is willing to sell all of its shares in the airline that is losing money in the East African country. Here is a quote from him. I'm willing to sell the uh, whole of Kenya Airways PLC. I'm not in the business of running an airline that just has a Kenyan flag. That's not my business. That was at the sidelines of the U.S. Africa summit. Kenya's credit rating. Fitch downgrading. Fitch says the downgrade reflects Kenya's persistent twin fiscal and external deficits, relatively high debt and deteriorating external liquidity and high external financing costs, which presently constrain access to international capital markets. Joining us now from Nairobi, Johnson & Derry. He's the manager, corporate finance and advisory, ABC Capital Limited. Johnson, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, what do you make of that Fitch downgrade? Is it justified? uh sadly I, I think it is um because um we uh, i think i think we have generally been irresponsible in the last 11 or 12 years uh, in fiscal policy so if we i mean um, and it's coming at a time when um there's a global reckoning uh, you're talking about uh, uh the, the 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 northern hemisphere tightening money supply at a time when we had gotten used to easy money uh, globally. Uh, so it's, it's, it's really catching us at a bad time. And of course, after this comes after uh, the, the, the COVID, uh, and COVID and the uh, Ukraine uh, crisis. Um, I want to take a look at President Ruto's plans to raise revenue. He's got a number of initiatives here. He wants to, uh, let's see now, increase the tax... Um, pool. He wants to raise um, or rather triple tax collection, uh, not raise taxes over the next uh, five years. Is that is that possible? Uh, if it triples tax collection, if the, uh, uh, we're talking about raising uh, tax to GDP to about 30 percent. We've never reached that number. I think the highest we've gone, uh, the, the most we've done is probably gone close to slightly above 20 percent um, so um, and it, for, I mean for a developing country that's pretty aggressive and uh, the, the even the costs you incur in pursuit of that ob objective I think will be higher than any revenues that have been raised as a consequence but uh, the, the last one or two years um, the government's uh, uh, actually has has raised more than they anticipated, but largely because of uh, higher prices and not because of uh, more economic activity. Well, what do you make of the plan to digitize the provision of all government services? Is that possible? It, it, it's possible, um, uh, probably necessary, uh, because uh, uh, one of the areas that Kenya needs to improve on is the ease of doing business. And when it makes it easier to to interact with government in that in that manner, um, we, we I mean we I think the economy uh, th that's been one of the the I mean the co economy has been driving with its hand and break up 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 because of uh, such uh, issues. Uh, so if we can make it easier for guys to do business, um, we, I mean it makes it easier for the economy to run. 
What about cutting the budget by three billion dollars? I uh, I guess before the 2022 2023 fiscal cycle. Um, and you also mentioned in part, I guess, removing fuel subsidies and food subsidies. Can can is that also possible as well? Not only is it possible removing food food subsidies and uh, uh, fuel subsidy is necessary right now. I think the 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 government owes uh, the fuel sector about eighty billion uh, in in unpaid subsidies, and this is money that is supposed to be funding uh, day to day business of this uh, day to day uh, operations of these businesses. So one has to wonder how who is funding these businesses and and on what terms, right? So um, uh, clearly, the government has been unable to. Uh, meet its end of the bargain. Uh, the, the deal was uh, fuel sector uh, pays a, charges a lower price, and then give a, government makes up for the difference uh, with fuel uh, with, with subsidies. And this has not come through. Uh, it's been it's proven very expensive for 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 oil marketing companies, and uh, some have gone into distress. Um, so uh, I think it's necessary to remove, and even the government. Uh, by the virtue of the fact that it can't pay w what it owes shows some signs of distress as well. So that means uh, two things. Uh, number one, it's not raising as much revenues as it needs to. Number two, it's not uh, generating uh, uh, as much. Uh, I mean, it's, not, uh, it's spending more than it, it can afford. So uh, something has got to give. And uh, naturally, uh, cutting the, the, what you'll do to the $3 uh, billion dollars in, in, in spending is a, is a good first start, but uh, it can it can be better. Uh, one of the areas I think where they should be looking at is asset sales, just to uh, help balance the budget. All right, but speaking of subsidy, see this is the thing, uh, Johnson. This subsidy thing, we're going through it here in Nigeria. It's always easy to say you're going to cut the subsidies and remove them, but when it comes to the action, the EPRA, for instance, your uh, regulatory authority there is holding on to subsidies for December. I guess because of the festive period. So, I mean, looking at that, is that surely going to be, you know, reviewed again in January, or is this harder than it is? Uh, you know, um, the, initially they came with the energy that they came with, and actually they removed subsidies on 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 petroleum. I mean, um, what, what we call super here, um, uh, but uh, but diesel. And I think kerosene subsidies are maintained, uh, and the government, I think, is finding it difficult to remove those subsidies. Um, but, you know, uh, there's going to be divergence between the economic prices and the, and the uh, prices at the till, and, and, and at some point that's going to become unsustainable, and, um, and uh, a, a, a normalization of the prices uh, can 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 cause you know unrest because uh, you've not dealt with the actual issues that are bedeviling the the sector. Say for example, um, uh, prices have gone too high in the, in the in the energy sector. What ideally is the issue and how can it be resolved? So instead of asking that question and resolving it on that end, you you know uh, applying uh, a bandage to the wound. Uh, without actually resolving it, and 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 that's what subsidies are. So the wound, the the the, the injury still festers uh, without being resolved. So my, uh, I think what we needed to see uh, is is uh, before we go down to this road too long, because it becomes the longer we stay on this road, the more politically unfeasible it is to resolve it. So the idea should have been to remove the. Um, all the subsidies, and did, and and so that the market can deal with the issues uh, at that point. Yeah, we are going through the exact same thing here, where we've allowed subsidies to go on for too long. You know, like ten years now here in Nigeria. Eurobond, two billion dollars due June 2024. Can it be paid off with no negative uh, impact, uh, Johnson? Uh, I think I think uh, 2024. That's that's more than a year away. Uh, we don't know what the market will look like at that point. Um, if 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 uh, the American and the European economies are, uh, go too deep into a recession, 
and 2024 is just is very is as I think when the Americans are having their their presidential elections are not wrong, so we might see some easing at that point, and 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 uh, that easing then uh, could could lower yields and looking at repay. But you know that's that's hope and hope is not a strategy. I think the primary strategy the government is looking to rely on is to have banks. Uh, uh, bridge the financing until such a point where uh, the markets are, uh, are, are, are uh, more favorable and, and the government can raise funding at better rates. Uh, you mentioned the Americans. Uh, on the, he, Ken, President Ruto was at the, in Washington, D.C. for the U.S.-Africa Leaders Summit. He met with um, private sector leaders there. And he wants to increase private capital flows back to Kenya. Is that possible? Can he successfully, you know, entice them to bring capital back to Kenya? Tough question. Um, um, well, it isn't really. I, I have uh, currently um, uh, we've been, been involved in transactions where investors want to put money into into Kenya and and East Africa, and East Africa is an attractive market. Uh, because we now have DRC, South Sudan, Somalia as potential growth areas, and of course the traditional uh, areas of Tanzania, Uganda, and Kenya. And Kenya is a good, very good entry point. So it's doable. Uh, uh, I think uh, kudos to him for making the pitch. Uh, let's see if it bears fruit. What about affordable housing? On the domestic front, he says he wants to build about 200,000 affordable housing units annually. Um, is that possible? Stuff. I know even the UK have, the, the Tories have uh, such an objective and uh, they've been struggling to get there. Uh, and it's tough because um, the, the, this is a political, uh, you know, statement. And then, of course, is the economic reality of it. So there's actually some affordable housing units coming up. Um, but I think largely... Uh, the market will dictate how this plays out. I want to uh, get your thoughts on his uh, plans for Kenya Airways. I know while he was in D.C., he met with some Delta Airlines uh, officials talking about trying to get some support. Um, I, you know, is Kenya, what, what's your read on Kenya Airways? Does, should it still be supported? Should it be, should it be sold off? There he is there saying, I'm willing to sell the whole of the shares. He's not in the business of running an airline that just has a Kenyan flag. Uh, what do you think should happen with Kenya Airways? I think uh, that's the best solution. Um, I know the concerns for the guys who want to keep KQ afloat is because uh, KQ seems important uh, with regards to international trade where Kenya is concerned, tourism and international trade. Um, however, um, it doesn't make sense to continue taxing ordinary Kenyans to fund um, you know, uh, the, the airline. The airline should pay for itself. Uh, and I think this is a good compromise between both sides where um, um, uh, so somebody else buys it, takes the liabilities off of uh, Kenya, or at least the, the liabilities that needs to, uh, that, that, that uh, future liabilities that we would meet uh, had it uh, stayed uh, public uh, or rather Kenyan. Uh, and, and right now it's consuming about 20, Kenya, 20 billion Kenya shillings a year, that's about um, uh, $200 million, or slightly under $200 million a year. And I don't think that's money we have, can afford. So I think uh, this is a very good compromise. I uh, finally, I mean, he said discussions with Delta at a preliminary stage, the government looking for partnerships. Do you think that, I mean, with looking at the, the books and the loss making, that it's possible to get a, a U.S. partner um, like a Delta Airlines uh, over in the U.S. that could come in and uh, prop up the uh, KQ? Sorry, just, just repeat the question again. Yeah, do you think that with a Delta Airlines or a, a possible another airline from the U.S. could come in as a partner for, for KQ? Yeah, yeah not, not just partner, but owner. Uh, that, I think that's the idea. Uh, the, 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 the idea is to get the, 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 the liabilities of uh, taxpayers' uh, uh, or government balance sheet. And and, uh, and but still see, see if you can uh, have it uh, continue running. 
remember the, the, the argument that uh, uh, if you continue doing things the same way, you, you shouldn't expect change, right? Uh, so if uh, uh, somebody else comes and runs it uh, away from government, maybe we can have new thinking, uh, better entrepreneurial, uh, you know, um, news uh, at the top of, 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 of the airline, and therefore we will see uh, uh, better outcomes there. I think that's, I think that's, that's the way forward. Great stuff. Johnson uh, Inderi, uh, Manager, uh, Corporate Finance and Advisory, ABC Capital Limited from Nairobi. Thank you so much. A whole lot we discussed today. Debt, revenue, airlines, uh, subsidies, so much. Johnson, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us.